glass. Wiping off the glass. Hard <laughs> right, left and the right combination. What is keeping him up, Phil? I don't know. <laughs> Can't even get his foot up to protect him. Right hand, he's there. Uh, the enemy knocks you around and beats you up. I'm so thankful that you're here today. I got I got a feedback real loud. I'm gonna get loud here in a minute. So you might as well turn me down just a little bit. Um. So how many of you glad? That's better. Thank you. How many of you are glad that you're in God's house today? Huh? Come on. I am so thankful. To be in God's house, and uh, thank you for being here today, and it's, uh, it's awesome, and it's good to have my brother all the way from Houston, Texas here worshiping with me today, and him and his wife, Angela, and my little nephew, uh, little Cooper, isn't it, isn't it awesome, little Coop's alive and well, and got a lot of hair on his head, amen? Good deal, got more than his Uncle Brian has. Uh, I got a staggering statistic I want to give you. See, we live in the Bible Belt. See, we, we, we live in a time, man, that we can come to church as we please, do pretty much as we please, listen to whatever we want to listen to. And, but but a, sta- a staggering statistic I, I want to give you today, and it's going to blow your mind, but I want you to hang on to this because, listen, God is bigger than Camelsville, Kentucky. Listen to this. 63%. Everybody say 63%. Listen to this. 63% of Americans... Don't believe there is a devil. You say, well, Brian, don't everybody think like we think? No. No, they don't. 63% of Americans don't believe there is a devil. And you know how I know that's real? You know how I know that that statistic is a fact? Because you look at the way America is living. You look at sin in our world today. You look at the activity of Satan in your life personally. And I will tell you this. That is a fact that I know he is alive. Because of the way and the things that he is doing. Now listen to this. I got news for you this morning. There is a devil. Now he's not talked about much in Baptist churches. He's not talked about a lot in a lot of different churches. But I'm going to tell you the truth this morning. There is a devil. Now, he don't have a black goatee. He don't have horns. He don't have a long red tail following him. But there is a devil. Now, I'm going to say it again because there's so many naive people. Today's sermon is going for over 40,000 people are going to listen to this sermon today. And if one person out of the 40,000 will get it, praise be unto God. There is a devil, and he is alive. But hey, I got some news for you today. My God is alive too. He is alive. He is alive. Somebody better praise him. He is alive. He's not dead. He is alive. Don't let that become just minute to you in your life. Don't let that just saying that God is alive just become another word and just another thing that you're living by. Listen to me. God is alive. He is alive. Listen to this. I wrote this down. Men flying loaded planes into the World Trade Center, that's demonic. I'm going to say it again because the devil is a liar. But the devil also, he is alive. Men flying planes, loaded planes with ammo into the World Trade Center, 9-11, is demonic. I'm going to go deeper. Hitler. I'm going I'm to hit this demon right upside the head. You know what? Satan may, he may try to huff, and he may try to puff, and he may try to blow my house down. Hey, but greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. I just think it's time for Christians to knock the devil out with the Holy Ghost punch. I just think it's time for you and I to stand up and take back what the daggone devil has tried to steal from you. And if i got to get in your grill today to make you understand that there is a devil... I'll do it. You're not fighting flesh and blood. You're fighting the devil. You're fighting a demonic influence straight from the pits of hell. This sermon's going to get hot in here. Hitler killing over 6 million Jews. I said it. Hitler killing over 6 million Jews. That's demonic. I'm going to go deeper. Y'all ready? Say, I'm ready, preacher. 
Watch this. Kidnappers, rapists, child pornography, killing, drugs, alcohol, premarital sex. It's all from the pits of hell. It sure is. That's good preaching. Ain't that right, Cooper? That's, that's good preaching. Because listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. We must preach against the influence of the demonic. We as Christians must quit being so stinking naive that you're blaming everybody else for what's going on in your life. You must rise up and say, you know what? This is who my enemy is. This is what I'm fighting against. And his name is Satan. Loose for the devil. Whatever you want to call him. It's demonic. It is demonic. So listen, if you're a child of God and you're saved and you're born again, watch this. You're in a, you're in a battle. Listen to me. If you're saved, I want you to raise your hand. Come on. There's some hands up. That's all right. That means that you admit that you're lost and you need to get saved. So y'all look around. Everybody hold your hand up. Come on. Look around, everybody. Come on. Now I want you to turn that person beside you and I want you to say, you're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. The church is not my enemy. Hallelujah. You're in a boxing ring. Either you're coming out of a storm, either you're in the storm, or you're getting ready to go through the storm. But you will go through a battle. Marriage, you will go through a battle. You will. But listen to me. I wrote this down. The kingdom of God is not a playground. Listen to me. The kingdom of God is not a playground. It's a battlefield. It's a battlefield. The kingdom of God, the God is nothing to play around with. Watch me. You're not going to fool God. You're not going to con God. God knows everything's going through your mind right now. He's got your digits. He's got your address. He's got your cell phone number. He knows if he's on speed dial, low dial, or no dial. God knows where you're, he's at in your life. Somebody give him praise because it's true. Now, if you have your Bible... I'm going to read you some scripture we've read. We've studied in vacation Bible school. We've preached about it in churches today. But I'm going to give you a word straight from the Bible, the throne room of God. I believe today, out of all the sermons that I've ever preached here at this church, today I am on mission. Today I've got a word in my spirit. And you say, well, I don't know if I come to the right church. Oh, you're at the right church at the right time because the Holy Ghost is in the house. God will get you here. I come to arrest you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Today I pray you give God your ears. You give him your mind. You give him your actions. You give him everything you've got. Because listen, today is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. You there say Amen. Are y'all really ready for this word? UFC, the ultimate fight for Christ. Listen, if you're ever going to win a victory in your life, you will have to fight for it. Every great victory in the Bible, they had to fight for it. Quit being a sissy and cowering down. Oops. Stand up. I'm in the Lord's army. I will beat the devil with a Bible verse. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Y'all quit towering down. God's in you. And you say, Brian, you're just crazy. Not everybody's geared like you. Not everybody's right. Listen, if you've got God, you've got God. You better quit making excuses how you're living and justifying your lifestyle. Because I'm telling you, one day God will square you up. Yeah, that's good preaching. Verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6. I love this. It says, finally... I understand this because he was talking to the church there of Ephesus. And this church was going through battles after battle after battle after battle. Like me, like you, like everybody here. And Paul said, my goodness. Finally. Finally they get this. Listen. Finally be in who? It didn't say finances, did it? It didn't say your intellectualism, is, does it? He doesn't say, he talks about your blue chair, don't be, don't be comfortable, does he? He said, be strong in the Lord. My God, I don't know who I'm preaching to or who I'm speaking to this morning, but you're in a battle right now. Your mind is, you're sitting there fighting a battle right now, even as I'm trying to minister to you the Word of God, and you can't even focus. But I'm going to tell you something in this Bible. God says, you be strong. You be strong in the Lord, not your, not your marriage. 
because you're going to have problems in your marriage. Don't you be, don't you be strong in your home because your home one day is going to be gone. Amen? Don't you be strong in that old vehicle that you own because one day that, that old vehicle is going to be gone. Don't you be strong in this church because one day this church is not going to be here because I am, hallelujah, the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He says, you be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. My God, my God. You be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. My God is not weak. My God is not weak. My God is mighty. He can save. He can seal. He can deliver. He'll set you free this morning. And somebody needs to praise him right now. I'm telling you, he's mighty. He's mighty. You say, Brian, he can't fix my marriage. Oh, yes, he can. Brian, he can't fix my children. He's mighty. He's got power. He can fix you. Y'all believe that this morning? That one word right there should set everybody in this church free this morning. That one little word, be strong in the Lord. Don't you rely upon your, your, your mind. Don't you rely upon mankind. Don't you rely upon Elkhorn Baptist Church. Don't you rely upon nothing. But be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Whoa, I feel it. Mm. Listen to this. Take your stand. Johnny, take your stand. You be strong. You believe in the Lord. You stand up. You take your stand. Hallelujah. The world has compromised. They've justified. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to be an old time preacher just for a moment. Y'all all right with that? Yeah, the old world's compromised even, even marriage. Now you got man marrying man and woman marrying woman. And I may have to die for this statement one day, but bring it on. Because I know, well, I've read the Bible, that persecution will be coming to you and I. But my God, my God, my God, my power, my strength lies in the Lord. And I will stand for him. I will not justify for this world. The Bible said that a man should marry a woman. And that's what the Word says. A man is made for a woman. Hallelujah. It's not a man and a man. It's a woman and a man. That's right. That's right. But the Word says, and we'll stand for that into the day we die. I don't care what the ACLU says. I don't care what California says. I don't care what no denomination says. Listen, we had a Southern Baptist church in Louisville, Kentucky, to ordain its first homosexual pastor. What are we doing? They, their statement was this. He can reach people that we can't. Boy, that's going to stand before the Lord. I know some of you are already in your, on the front of your seat. You're sitting there holding on like, where am I at? Welcome to a Holy Spirit filled church that believes in all the Bible and we don't compromise the Bible. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't afraid of the devil. I am not. You say, Brian, you're only six foot tall, 200 pounds. I don't care. I've got God in me. Hallelujah. I'll stand on the word because the word will not fail me. It will not come back void. It will stand when the world's gone, coach. Woo. I don't know what y'all feel back there, but I feel good. Mm. Hallelujah. Hey, if you asleep now, you better wake up in this house. I told him to turn it up. Turn my hearing aid down on that. Ding, ding, round two. I'm going to show you this. Where was I at? I get off Torah. Verse 12. Good to, you know what? It's good to hear y'all laugh. I've been to churches before, man, they don't even laugh. I've been to churches before, man, there's no joy. There's no laughter. There's nothing going on. There's dead as dead as dead could be. We need to pray for them. That God would rise up in that church. 
and give them souls. Hallelujah. Listen to this verse 12. For we, for we struggle, our struggle is not against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the what? The rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil and were the heavenly realms. Listen to this. Y'all with me say, I got you. Come on. Verse 13. Therefore, therefore, therefore. Anytime you see a therefore in your Bible, you got to know what's there for. <laughs> you got to know what's there for, okay? Here's what's there for. We know who our enemy is. But how do we fight against him? How do we fight against this? Therefore, put the half armor of God on. Just put the helmet on. <laughs> Just put the bright breastplate on. Hallelujah. Just shod your feet with the gospel and you'll be okay. The what? The what? Former. He didn't just tell you to guard your mind. He said you guard your heart. Yee. Put on all the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes. Listen to this. He said it's coming. It's going to come. Evil's going to come. The devil's going to come. You're going to fight with people. La, 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 la. It's going to happen. It's coming. So, but when that day comes, look what he says is good. He gives you an answer so that you may be able to what? Stand your ground. Stand, Elkhorn, stand your ground. Listen by radio. Stand your ground. I love this. Watch this. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your what? Waste, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. Notice it says it better be in place, not displaced. If you go to, <laughs> I thought about this this week. I said, I know how Christians work. It's so funny. And we try to say, devil, wait just a minute. Let me go get my armor on. Wait just a minute. I'm not ready. Hold up a minute, devil. I'll find that Bible verse here in just a moment. The devil is no, he ain't going to listen to you. He's after you. Watch this. He wants to kill you right now. Can I be any more plainer? He wants to kill you right now. He wants to kill your children right now. I know people sitting there going, Brian, that's bad. Death is bad. Hell is bad. You're not going to go down to hell and smoke a cigarette. Oh, you'll be smoking all right, but not a Marlboro. All right, here it is, cold. Watch this, here we go. Where am I at? I'll make sure y'all with me. Y'all don't know either. Okay, we'll go to verse 15. <laughs> yeah, okay, and verse 15. And with the feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of what? Peace, peace. God just told me just now in my spirit, even though you're in a war, you can have peace. Amen. Even though things don't look good as a Christian, you can have peace. Even though your bills are not paid and the government's after you. Woo, peace. Peace. God says, Brian, even though there's war happening right now, even though it don't look too good right now, you can have peace. Only God can give you peace. Yes, Only God can give Elkhorn peace. Only God can give this pastor peace. What we have right here. 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I love this word. It's so good. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of? The sword is what? Come on. The sword is what? The word of God. The word of God. So take up the sword, which is the word of God, and pray in what? Listen to me. I'm going to make a statement. It's going to probably, whoa. There is such a thing as praying in the spirit. Now, all the religious people looked at me and said, where do you get that at? Right there. It says, when you pray, you pray in the spirit. 
That's another sermon. That's a deep word. And I promise you, I will get to that and preach on that later. But there is such a thing as praying in the Spirit. I truly believe there are people praying today with unforgiveness in their heart. And listen to me. Listen to this, Pastor. Your prayers are going up. They're hitting the ceiling. And they're coming down. And they're smacking you upside your head. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, if you've got an ought, if you've got unforgiveness to your brother, God will not hear your prayers. So there is a thing that people can be praying and not God be hearing. Wow, so I just wonder how many people here today have unforgiveness in their heart, but you've been praying, but you've not received an answer. Let God set you free right now. Let God set you free right now. You think of that person that you got that ought, that hatred against, and you need to forgive them so you'll be set free. Y'all got me? You got me? Say, I got you. Come on. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. And listen, listen to this. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Keep on praying. Listen, here's what God gave me. Y'all ready? Listen to this. The only offensive, listen to this, piece of spiritual armor you have. The only thing that God has given you to fight the devil with is one piece of armor out of six. Think about this. One piece of armor that God has given the saints to fight the devil with is called the sword of the sword of the spirit. Back in those days, the sword was probably about six foot long. It's a whole lot longer than this one. But I, it's not sharp. It's not real. Thank God. You don't want me to have a real sharp sword. <laughs> Y'all say amen. So I felt the Lord on that one, you know. But here's the deal. This is the only weapon that God gave a soldier when he went into battle with the enemy. He gave him the sword of the Spirit. And God says this, it's nor by might nor by power, but it's by the power of Jesus Christ within you. So listen to this. God said, I've given you a sword. And the sword is the word. This, this sword is sharper than a two-edged sword. It'll cut you down to the very bone marrow that's in your body. It separates the spirit from the soul. It separates confusion from anything in this world. The word of God, it will stand when everything else fails. God says, I've given you an offensive weapon. It's called a sword. It's called a word straight from the Lord. See, a lot of people think they're going to outsmart the devil. A lot of people think, well, I can come to church and I'm okay. Listen, Satan goes to church more than all of us in here together. I'm going to know more Bible verses. No, you won't. Satan, all of us can get up here and quote our favorite Bible verse, and I guarantee you Satan can quote the Bible. You're not going to outsmart him. You're not going to outwit him. You're not going to be more faithful than him. You're not going to outgive him. But one thing I can do that he can't do is worship King Jesus. One thing he cannot do is have the sword in his hand and say, Come on, I've got the Bible in my life. The Word is good. The Word will stand. People say all the time, how do you memorize all them scripture? I ain't got no choice. If I'm going to go into battle and the devil's going to come at me, see, most of y'all got a sword in your hand you're trying to cut your wife. Most of you got a sword in your hand, but you're cutting your boss. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Wee, 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 wee. Zorro, zinc, zinc, zinc. <laughs> most of you got a sword in your hand because you're born again, but you're cutting the wrong person. Let that get in there. God says, I've given you a sword for one purpose. That when that enemy comes against you, he says, you raise that sword up and you say, come on with your bad self. Because I've got God with me. And I've, God has never lost a battle. God has never lost a war. God will never be defeated. My God is alive. Hallelujah. It's the sword. It's the sword of God. It's the word of God. Then when Satan says, oh, you're nothing, that ain't what God said. God says, I'm holy. God says, I, I, I've got the Lord in me. I've got the Holy Ghost in me. I've got the Spirit of God in me. But here's what's wrong. Most of you are fighting with no edge. Most of you are fighting. You're in a battle. And the enemy's coming against you. Oh, you say, shoo, 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 shoo. you're sitting there trying to swing. I know it's in the Bible. I know it's there somewhere. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. 
but you ain't got no age. You've lost your sharpness. You've lost your edge. You broke it off a long time ago. Somebody's offended you. Somebody's made you mad. You're mad at a church. Oops, I didn't say that. You're mad at a deacon. You're mad at a pastor. And you've been swinging and swinging and swinging, gossiping, gossiping, gossiping. You ain't got no edge. You ain't got no edge in your life. I'm here today to convince you and tell you that if you're a child of God and you're in the Word, the B-I-B-L-E, and you've got a sword in your life. It's time to use it, church. Some of you are swinging, but you ain't got no edge. That makes sense? You've lost your cut. You've lost what you used to have. Mm. I want a church, and I, it's here. I ain't going to candy coat this stuff no more. Elkhorn Baptist Church, it's here. Hallelujah. We've got the Word of God in this house. We've got the Spirit of God in this house. We're not swinging with a little off the edge. I'm not going to hit you, honey, I promise. I get tore up, and the kids are sitting there going, I'd be like it too. She's sitting there going, please don't cut me. Please don't cut me. Please don't cut me. I'm going to cut the devil. If i got to stab him, hurt him, I'm going to stab the devil. I ain't going to swing the loose old loose edge sword. I'm one ain't got an edge. One ain't sharp. I come today to declare, hey, my God's alive. Amen. Some of you, you've dropped your sword. You've cut the blade. You're not what you used to be. All you're doing is packing. All you feel the handle. You're making excuses. Oops. To live the way you want to live. You said, Brian, I can feel the sword. I got it. No, you've lost your edge. Uh, preach that Cooper. You know what? Sometimes I really believe this. God will use a baby to give him praise in the middle of a service like this. Sometimes I really believe that the Word of God is going so forward, even a babe, look at the Cooper Center going, get him, Brian. Get him, Uncle Brian. Yeah, he can preach. He got high life. But he can preach, though. Sometimes I believe God will use children to praise him when the adults won't. You've lost your age. I'm talking about, you remember when you was born again? Hmm. You remember that day that God reached down in the miry clay and reached down and grabbed a soul and breathed life into you and he gave you a sword, hallelujah. But don't, now some of you lost your feeling. You've lost your age. You're too politically correct, intellectual. You're a, you're a religious nut. You've lost your age. If somebody stands up and claps God is for God anymore, they have a business meeting. Lost your edge. Man, I'm talking to you. Whew. You have the edge you once had for the Lord, or have you been swinging a sword with no edge? Are you, are you here today under my voice? You say, man, I feel something today. Oh, what you feel is the Lord in your life. What you feel is the line of Judah rising up in you. What you feel is God. He wants to give you a sword. Some of y'all need to drop that old sword you got in your hands. You ain't got no edge. People try to come to me and say, well, I believe this and I believe that. And I'm sitting there going, that ain't what God said. See, the word will stand. And see, here's what God just gave me. Y'all right, it's good. Thank you, Lord. Satan is not after you. This is good. Because listen, if you belong to God, you've already switched owners. You're under different ownership. You're under the blood. So listen to me. This is going to help somebody. This is helping me right now. What God is telling me, Mark, is this. Satan is not after you because you've already been blood bought. But what he is after, Melinda, is your destiny. Your dreams. Your visions. If he can stop the church, he'll win. But I declare today under the unction of God that God's going to rise up in Elkhorn Baptist Church and we're going to see signs. We're going to see wonders. We're going to see miracles. Somebody help me praise him. You accept that this morning? Come on. Do you accept that this morning? I'm talking about cut, 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 cut. Cut, cut, cut. That's what I'm talking about. We ain't dead at this church. We got a God that owns a sword. Hallelujah. It's sharp, too. It cuts. It cuts. 
Some of you today, I'm going to ask you a question. Which one are you swinging? Which one are you swinging this morning? Are you trying to get your way? Are you trying to do it God's way? Oh, that's a good word. If you don't get your way, are you a big baby and leave? I know I'm hitting some areas today. It's good, though. It's so good. Because you know why? If people get mad when the truth goes forward, it means you've got something in your life you've not dealt with. You're swinging a sword with no blade. Randy, you get this word? Man of God, swing the sword. We prepared to get into the ring last week. This week we're in the ring. And I wish I could sit and give you 10 explanations, 10 pieces of armor that God would give you. But God says this is so powerful. God says all you need is one. All you need is one. Y'all been swinging and swinging. And God says all you need is me. All you got to do is swing me. When the enemy comes against you, swing a sword. When people rise up against you, don't cut them. Cut the devil. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to cut the hell out of the devil. It's true. I thought about something else. Praise team, y'all come. I thought about a slingshot. Now listen, I know a lot of you today are out there, you're sitting there going, I don't like to fight. Oh, you're fighting. I'm going to run from the devil. No, you know how he'll catch you. I can outsmart him. No, you can't. He's got more sense than you got. I can outquote him. No, you can't. He knows more Bible than you got. Oh, I'll give him. No, you won't. He, he's got some money. People spend it on him every day. People ask me all the time. They said, Brian, if somebody were to win the lottery, would you take that money? Let me go ahead and clarify this. Yes. I mean, and this is going over 40,000 people. You know why I'll take that money? Because we're going to turn it around. And we're going to build God's kingdom. We're going to build it. We're going to build it. We're going to build it. Here's what God told me. I don't know how far this to go. Here, I'll do this one. Here's what God told me. Christians are like a slingshot. They're like a slingshot. A lot of times, man, you're in a battle. And, oh, oh devil, you, here you are. You're in here and you're like, oh, don't pull me too hard. Oh, don't stretch me too much. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts, devil. Don't pull too far. And what God spoke in my heart to you this about two days ago, he said, yeah, Christians may be like a slingshot, and you got the ammo inside of it, and the old devil's trying to hurt you and hurt, harm you. And a lot of you are like, oh, don't do it. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden... You fall, your ammo falls, your sword's been cut. But here's what God told me to tell you. Satan can promote you. Y'all listen, this is a word that some of you probably never heard, but I'm going to preach it today. See, oh, you are in the ring. You're in the ring. You're fighting. you got the enemy up against you. And some of you, like this old slingshot, here you are, you're going back, and all of a sudden you'll drop down. Oh, don't stretch me too far, God. It hurts. And what God said, that Satan will promote you. Listen, what if I told you your battle equals your promotion? Y'all get that in your spirit? Whatever hell. Listen to me. This is good. Boy, you can drop a pen up in here now. That's good. <laughs> Ever how much hell you're going through means the far you'll go. The farther you'll go, the more pressure Satan puts on you. The more he pulls back, the farther you'll go. Y'all, y'all missed a praise break. Y'all missed a praise break. Some of you right now, you're in the slingshot. You don't feel like you can go on. He's pulling, he's pulling, he's pulling, he's pulling. Oh, this is a good word too. You're the most vulnerable. You're apt to break when the most pressure comes. But if you get through the pressure... He'll promote you to your destiny. Did you get that? Did you get that? I'm going through problems. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Boom. Y'all 
are gone. Some of y'all like, yeah, that dude did not take his medicine this morning. I'm sitting and telling you today, you've been looking at your obstacles totally wrong. Listen to me, church. I'm giving you a word on a mission straight from heaven. Some of you right now are in that ring. Whether you like it or not, you're in that ring. You're battling the enemy. You're not battling against flesh and blood. You're battling against who? Satan. Satan's your opponent. You've trained. You're in the ring. You've got your sword. So the spirit equals the word. Now you feel like you're having problems, trials, and errors. You can't go on. Your marriage is falling apart. Your children are heathens, prodigals. No, they're just like you. But anyhow, all of a sudden, he pulls you back. And he pulls you back where you're just sitting there going, oh, I'm going to break. I can't take no more. I'm going to give up on that church. I'm going to give up on my marriage. I'm going to give up on my children. Oh, I can't take it no more. And watch this all of a sudden, Amber. Y'all have been looking. I have been looking at my obstacles totally wrong. Amen. What if I told you, Donnie, the more hell you go through, the better your destiny will be. Are y'all getting this word? Watch this. How many of y'all going through some stuff? Good! My God! I can't, I can't take it, preacher! Some of y'all wait. I wish I had a big honking slingshot <laughs> with a big honking ball. I thought about doing that, but I thought I'd hit you in the head, and I said, man, that's bad. So, how many of y'all in the ring? Every hand should go up because of the light. Watch this. If you're not there, Sheila, you're getting ready to go there. So when you're in that ring, I can't take no more. God, I am breaking. I'm, I just can't do it. My nerves are shot. You will go farther the more stretches in this. In this, in this. Y'all got it? In the slingshot, the more it's stretched, the more pressure, the more hell in the hallways, I call it. Here's what I'm starting to think. I'm starting to pray a little bit different, too. When, when storms are coming my way, I know my promise is near. I'm working on my doctorate degree right now. And it's hard to believe. Mama don't even think it's true yet. But... John's already a doctor, and I'll never be a, a medical doctor. I can't stand the blood and the... But anyhow, it's another sermon. I passed out where he's like, give me more. <laughs> but now, when the devil comes against me, Robbie, I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, something good's getting ready to happen. I know y'all look at me like... But I promise you, if you'll listen to this preacher this morning... The more stuff you're going through, if you don't give up, you can give up. And that's what most churches do. That's why they're averaging 15 now on Sunday morning. But God give us souls. God fill this house, fill the new church. God build us another church. Let us be a mother church. God give us souls. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. Here you are. Bob Jean Walker, doctor said prostate cancer. Numbers were up 750 off the scale. Most people looked at him and signed you off, Bobby. Well, just go ahead and give up. I, I know cancer is real because demons are real. I, we're not fighting. We're not fighting cancer. We're fighting the devil behind the cancer. Y'all getting this word. This is, I don't know if y'all like this or not, but God has ministered to me even as I'm preaching. Bobby went to the doctor, 750. Next time he went back, 250. And this week, he went back to the doctor. What was it? Come on. Come on. Just turn it up. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. We're going crazy. Come on.
Come on. Woo. I don't know what God's doing, but come on. You're going to praise him. I know y'all are looking at me going. <laughs> Rocky's in the house. <laughs> I'm telling you if you're listening to me. My fight is against the devil. You're not my enemy. My wife is not my enemy. I like this. I'm going to take. Y'all are in so much trouble. I've got the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. I'm ready, I'm prepared. I got the sword in my hand. That's all I need. That's all I need to get my family back. The, oh, to get my family back, the Word of God, get them back. To get my wayward children back. The Word of God. I prophesy that over you today. To have a church like no other church, it takes the Word of God to do it all. So I'm going to ask you this morning, what blade do you have? What blade are you swinging, Dixie? What blade are y'all swinging? You got, you got an edge this morning? Doc, brother, great young man of God. God, I want the sword. God, that's my daily bread. That's my next breath. That's all I've got is Jesus Christ. When hell's coming against me and the devil tries to knock me out, he may huff. He may puff, but he can't have my family. He may huff. He may puff. He can't have my church. I'll swing the sword. Hallelujah. So, here's the invitation. I really believe today a lot of you have uh, lost your edge. You forgot where you come from. You have forgot where God brought you out of. You forgot about how good God is with you. James, sometimes we have to go down before God could ever stand us back up. Brother man, this morning, I want to give you this sword as a reminder of where God's brought you from. And He's not done yet. This altar's open. What a powerful concept. So many times I try to fix myself. Oh, this is what God just gave me. God keeps feeding me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. Why are we going through these problems? Why are we going through these addictions? Why are we got to fight? 
What if I told you that you're not fighting for you, but you're fighting for your children? You're not fighting for just you. I'm fighting for my brother. Hallelujah. I'm not fighting for me. I'm fighting for the next generation. We got to break the curse. We got to break the curse. I declare today, break the curse. Reverse the curse. Get back, church, to where God got you, we brought you from. Swing the sword, swing the sword. Father God, in the name of Jesus, have your way today. God, bring us back. Lord, wave heaven over us today. And Lord, I pray today we would fight in your name. Men would fight for their children, their families, their sons and their daughters. In Jesus' name. John, God just spoke unto me. You're not fighting for you. You're fighting for Cooper. Break the curse. Break. Coach, break the curse. Elkhorn, I don't know what God gave you. But break the curse today. Swing the sword that has the blade and throw the one that don't have a blade, throw it away. Throw it away. In Jesus' name, y'all come. Come on.